Hey everyone, uh, we're back with another Pints with Air video today. I'm here, I'm Brent, I'm here with Ariel and Ryan. Um, today we are going to do a little departure from what we've been doing on technical topics and we're going to talk about what high-end audio means to us. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways you can uh, frame high-end audio or define high-end audio, high-performance audio, um, and uh, we're just going to give you some thoughts on what we're doing. But uh, first, it wouldn't be pints with air without pints. So, Ariel, what did you bring today? So we got another very local brewery, Asher Brewing. It's a teeny little organic brewery right next to, physically right next to Avery Brewing. They've been there a little bit longer. Um, really cool, teeny little, fun little brewery to go in, play games, and hang out. I love it. Uh, I love so this it. is the, uh, the Green Lantern, or Kolsch style. Ah. Pretty tasty. Is a Kolsch day. That's actually what I picked too. I've got uh, the Occidental Brewery uh, up in Portland. They make a great Kolsch, one of my favorites. It's a great summer standard, which, you know, in the middle of August, uh, where we're at now, it's yep. a good time for the uh, those easy drinking light Kolsch Hellas style beers. Yep. You have the same one, Ryan? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Ariel and I try to drink the same one at the same time. That way, we don't, we don't run one out of the refrigerator. And <laughs> it's not a race; they come in even numbers. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, not always, because sometimes I sneak one <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't quite make it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Hey, uh, before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to Clark Green, who's one of the guys who's been listening and commenting on these. Uh, video recordings. Uh, he sent me some cool artwork links uh, after we talked about beer can artwork last week. Uh, so cool. thanks, Clark. Um, anyone out there that comes up with fun stuff or, or has a suggestion for an awesome, awesome Kolsch or something this time, uh, just put it in the links below and I'll, uh, I'll definitely go through those. So today's on topic, what's high end audio? I've, you know, high end audio is a term that's been around for a while. Um, some people have call it high performance audio, which never really stuck, but is probably actually more accurate. Sometimes um, there's high priced audio. There's high priced audio, exactly. There's that, there's that too. Um, I mean, we see high end in, in just about any, you know, passion driven industry, you know, um, cars, kitchen knives, bicycles, snowboards. I mean, even in some non-passion driven industries, you can get high end refrigerators, high end washing machines. You know, there's, there's a lot of, lot of stuff out there. And, you know, sometimes it's defined by price. Sometimes it's defined by looks. Sometimes it's yeah. defined by performance and sometimes it's all three, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm having to call it, you know, you know, that kind of, you know, something that you're willing to spend a little more for than, than, the, than the generic mass market to get some perceived level of improvement in performance or looks or whatever that criteria is. Right. Um, yeah, some of that, I think it's that, yeah, that perceived improvement that you're yeah. willing to pay more for. Right. At and the most know, basic level. Yeah. And we consider ourselves a high-end company, a high-performance company, but you know, we make products that range anywhere from, you know, $1,800 up to $32,000, you know, all of which can seem crazy expensive to some people, right? Yeah. Even the $1,800 piece to uh, some people may seem really expensive for a headphone amp. Um, you know, $32,000 is arguably pretty expensive, even today when there are things, you know, that cost a whole lot more. It's a lot of money to put into a piece of gear you know, but we're far from what I would call the cost no object audio designs where you can spend a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars on an amplifier, a um, right. million dollars on a pair of speakers. Um, you know, and it's, it's always been our driving force at air to be the best high end value, I would say, yeah. or performance for the dollar. Definitely. Would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, one of the things everybody knows in audio is, is the higher you go, the more it takes to get to the next step. And that's, that's kind of the thing you always fight, you know, there's, there is a cost no object approach, but, you know, literally, you get almost infinite in how much you spend on a product. 
if you if you did everything in the in the world to possibly you know get the unobtainium technology into the piece that you're working on um you now we we see it at all the trade shows which is really interesting and it's you know trade shows are kind of fun for that because it's a you know the unobtainium what's what can you build with the resources that are out there today um however you know it's it it has been our ethos to really do the improvements and spend the money where they make the most difference within a, a particular product's price range. You know, we do a lot of tweaks inside our products. You know, there's parts that we, you know, do cryogenic freezing on, right? We could send the whole thing to cryogenically freeze it, but it caught, increased the cost, you know, a huge amount. So we just take the pieces that are, that benefit the most from that, send them out um, and get those back. And we do, a lot of other things that may or may not cost money, but it's, it's, I think a lot of it to me, um, in terms of high performance audio is about innovation. Like how deep do you dig in to get the extra performance, whether it's spending extra money or not. Right. Well, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, it's, we, we have a lot of products, you know, where you can get into this, put in more expensive components. It's got to sound better. And yep. It, it's it's even something that you know we as a company have been you know a little guilty of in the past where you know okay this technology re reads better on paper it's got to sound better and it, we know it's more expensive but it doesn't matter because it's going into this high-end component and just throw it in there and it'll be better and then years later we've gone back to those designs and we'll listen you know using various different types of components or resistors capacitors you name it and kind of compared what we were doing versus what's out today and found places where that's not necessarily true and that gives you you know more of a area to design more affordable pro products focus your money on the things that do make the difference and uh, you know avoid spending extra on places that you don't need to right yeah, I remember it clear clearly with the uh, MXRs when Ariel, you and Charlie were designing those, and we had the um, uh, circuit board material that Charlie found and was like, this is going to be amazing. Like, it's, its electrical properties are so close to Teflon, like, it's almost perfect. And we got it in, put it in, we're like, huh, this, this sounds great in some ways, but it's really lacking in the base. And it was because that board was too flexible. And we actually went with something that was a little bit more structurally stable, and it made a huge improvement there. Yeah. Yeah, that was certainly one of the, uh, you know, as a, yeah, that was certainly kind of one of the turning points where we really kind of cemented the fact that 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 uh, that 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 some of the mechanical properties are, can be more important than some of the dielectric properties in certain cases. Right. Um, but that's a yeah technicality I mean, to this topic. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of the the all everything makes a difference, right? And then everything. It's, Makes everything a difference makes a no difference. matter how much you think it can't, everything makes a difference. Yeah. And bad. And then it's what does it cost to make that difference? And is that cost worth it, you know, for that product? Because, you know, we could we could design, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar products, no problem. Like in some ways yeah. it's easier just to go up, up, up. Right. You know, it's always harder to get the same performance at a lower price. Yeah. That is always a struggle. Yeah. Is that 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 is that engineering game to play to try and get eke out the most performance for the least amount of money that yeah. is so not to veer off the topic too much you know one of the you know your question was you know what is high audio high-end audio really yeah and you know it's it's kind of a class of products that i think has that psychoacoustic factor that does make us feel in air's case you know closer to the music you know that sounds quote unquote better you know and that's always a subjective term so it's a it's a real slippery slope when you're designing what you consider high end so you know it's it's a place that it's difficult sometimes for people to see the value of but mm -hmm. you know when i i know when i first started with air i didn't get it i was like okay you know yeah it's some nice nice products and it sounds good but really you know that much money and you know is it worth it and uh you know it took it took a couple of years working here before it really clicked with me. I'm like, wow, everything that I'm listening to doesn't give me that same experience as when I'm listening to the big system. Right. And it, it really changed my outlook on how I perceive music. And I think 
for me, that's where the value of what high-end audio does because prior to that, I enjoyed music, sure, but I didn't have that same emotional connection even as a musician um, that I do now. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so, so I always like to, you always like to remember, you know, part of Charlie's ultimate mission for air, which was um, that he believed that music and and particularly um, well reproduced high quality music had restorative powers, and that it and that and that and that it can actually change the chemical balance in your brain and actually do good in the world. That was his goal: was to actually was to change the world by providing um, you know a connection, a, a real connection to to um, to the um, uh, to the um, 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 musicians' intention of their of their music. Yeah, absolutely. I think most everyone who's really involved in high end audio has that story about that moment where they heard that system and they ju and it just changed them forever. Yep. You know, I, I clearly remember one of those episodes for me. It was it was actually in Denmark in Copenhagen and. I was on a on a bike trip to see a friend, and we went over to his apartment. And he had some magna planers, and an Accuphase uh, integrated amp in this cool room downtown Copenhagen. Plants hanging, big windows, like probably the worst technical audio setup that you could ever imagine. Yeah. But that oh. system was magical. That was cool, yeah. and it just I get goosebumps thinking about it right now. You know, it's awesome. just one of those things where you're just like, wow, like that that piece, and that that is brain chemistry changing when you yep. get in that that moment um and providing for, that you so know i think for for us you know that's what high end means you know it can it can mean a lot of things like you said but but you know it does have to be that experience it's more than just mm -hmm. putting it into a big billeted chassis like we've done in, with the mxrs and you know many other companies have done in the past and you know right. run a big price tag on it it has to it has to be more than that and, you know, it's more than just, you know, wall candy or shelf candy or whatever that you can show off to your friends. It has to be something that provides that experience for you on an acoustic level and an emotional level where it does really, you know, redefine music for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's well said. I think that's a really <clears throat> I think that I would totally agree with that definition. It's it's a high end system is one that really transports you, mm -hmm. um, you know, regardless of how much it costs, you know, yep. what Cassie looks like how much you paid for it you know it's i guess that's kind of the same anyway um but you know it's 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 that it's that transformation that really makes it a high-end system and i mean I, you know price tag aside i mean it could be a 400 hundred dollar system or it could be a you know forty thousand dollar system to me it's 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 what it does for that person right right what the pono player did at four hundred dollars <laughs> right that that that's the point i didn't even think about that one when i said 400 <laughs> right no but it's that's just what triggered it for me it's like that that was yeah pretty damn magical right i'm sure Absolutely. anyone listening to this who has one knows exactly what i'm talking about but um yeah yeah that's 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 cool all right well um you know if you guys out there listening have have uh comments you have a system that you heard that was amazing um if you have thoughts on what high-end audio means to you particularly something that we left out something you want to add to this leave it in the comments below um or email us and you know if you're system doesn't do magical things right now call us give you know send us an email we're we're good with uh troubleshooting tweaks thoughts you know whether it's buying our equipment or or just a a room setup you know that's that's always uh super interesting stuff to talk about so until next time cheers everyone cheers cheers